Let me tell you about my friends over at Citrus America and their amazing juicing equipment. They're revolutionizing the way you enjoy freshly squeezed juice. They're at the best hotels, restaurants, and markets. Their mission is simple. Develop a unique consumer experience with on-premise juicing, deliver healthy taste options to clientele, and juice more faster. It's that easy. Citrus America supplies the highest quality juicing equipment and solutions in the industry. So whether you're a small business owner or a large corporation, Citrus America has the right juicing equipment for you. Find out more at citrusamerica.com. Hello, food fam. This is the Walk and Talk podcast, and I am your host, Carl Fiorini. Uh, We're podcasting on site at Ibis Images Studios, where food photography comes alive. On the menu today, and thank you, Peninsula Food Service, for supplying the proteins for the production. Uh, We've got this, oh my gosh, it's a lemoncello agave paste porchetta. Oh my gosh. Uh, the guest today is uh, the guest today is uh, he's a friend of ours. All right, uh, we're talking about a, a walk and talk media culinary partner. That means check out his restaurant recipes video series on the walkandtalk dot com. The chef Thomas Parker. Uh, he'll be joining us in a bit. He cooked up this uh, BLF GT thing, and we're going to get into that. And it was freaking amazing. Uh, Jefferson Starship, Chef Jeffrey Schlissel, my man. Uh, why don't we jump into pre-shift, and uh, why don't you explain uh, some of these dishes that uh, you cooked up today to the audience, you son of a bee. You know, it, it was one of those things we were talking about what we would want to do for September, and I wanted to showcase some stuff going into fall. And I also want to do something that, you know, people can grill, and it's some stuff that's not been seen before, hasn't been seen in a while. It's like trusting that we talked, uh, like 50 shades of pork. So porchetta is the best of both worlds. It has a pork tenderloin in the center of it, and then wraps around the entire thing is the pork belly. But it's what you put inside the the rub that gives it the uh, intensity of the flavor profile. This one we did, the sun-dried tomato, pickled garlic, pickled fennel, uh, sun-dried tomato oil, salt, pepper, fennel, pollen, and a little bit of fennel Greek that we talked about with Chef Thomas earlier. And then um, we served that with chimichurri, and then we did polenta cake. All right, wait a minute. The polenta cake is ridiculous. I, I like polenta, but I've never, I've not ever had it in that application before. Yeah, it's so you know. Back in the day when I was going through culinary school and I did my externship, it was at uh, La Cucina Toscana in the Bonaventure Hotel and Spa, and Patrick uh, Small. Kamachi, Smell Kamachi, who's the chef, he was from France. We would do polenta, and it had to be different forms of polenta, and we would try to come up with different things. And then we did the grilled polenta, and that char, when you have a beautiful, you know, grill going, and then you have that char flavor in there, it really locks it in. Now we're trying to, you know, do that with the searzol, which is a tool that I brought. Thank God I brought it to John because I'm always the one that comes over here and spends money when I leave because he has these neat little gadgets. Today I did it to him. So it's on Amazon and it's one of the things that you take a little torch you do for like a plumber and it goes, it fits over that um, torch. It heats up to about 800 to about 1200 degrees, depending on where you, how far you put it in as far as the It looks like a, it looks like a floodlight. Doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it just gets super wicked hot. And you can sear tuna, you can sear um, steak to it. But what's really good is you can also sear applications you would never think of, like bread, like polenta cakes. So that's where I was kind of using it today. Did I mention how amazing the polenta cakes are? <laughs> yeah, we had two different cheeses in there, too. But we also used, because um, Pooch l- reached out, he said, hey, where can I get some violet, um, which is up in your neck of the woods, Foodie chef. patootie Foodie in patootie. the house. Definitely. Yeah, so when so. Thomas moves up to Georgia, that's actually where it comes from. It's this yellow and purple corn. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is going to be really cool. It's going to have different colors. The flavor profile was sweet. It was really cool to have that in there. But then the manchego and the fontina, it plays with your the palate. Yeah, the uh, the fontina, you you get that first, and, and then it ends I'm sorry, it was grand panada. Sorry, grand panada. Sorry, that's what it was. That you get yeah, first, yeah. and then it ends on the Manchego. Yeah. And it was fantastic. 
And then, uh, fantastic. Th- how about that sandwich though? Oh my God. So we took the pork ketta, we did a uh, charred broccoli rob. We did a slaw with uzu, had that lemon or le- lemon cello glaze on the top of that. And then it had, um, the fontina and the, uh, what was the other cheese? Fontina and provolone. That's what I used. And we then caramelized the outside and we had a garlic and, uh, sh- uh, onions that we pureed and then use that as like a, like the base or a sauce. And then the last but not least, we had these beautiful porterhouse. I think they were like three inch cut thickness of domestic lamb porterhouses that were just insane. Yeah. And then I dusted that with, um, matcha green tea with mint, a little bit of salt, and then hit that with a black garlic reduction with farro, which is this beautiful, it's almost like a rice. It's a grain. It's a, one of those ancient grains, and then did that in the style of risotto. And then we did um, blistered tomatoes on it as well. And then for the piece of resistance, because you work with a camera guy who says, where's the textures, where are your colors, where's this? So I did something that was a little bit different. I took um, one of those things that's on social media is where the, everybody's doing dehydrated you know, uh, pears and they're can- or candying them. So I just dehydrated them with um, blackberry. And then mm. I first glazed it with harissa, which is a North African pepper and a little bit of thyme, some salt, and then dehydrated. And a chef was asking me how long it take you. It was like 15 hours, uh, first at 160 degrees for about five or six hours. And then I dropped it down to 120 for the remaining 10 hours, but they were, they were delicious. And for those of you out there keeping track on this, um, when you see the pictures of this dehydrated fruit on the plate, you're definitely going to want to listen to this again and take note of uh, the temps and the uh, and how long. Because everything was freaking amazing. I'm going to have to bring uh, you, when I go to the doctor next, I'm, I'm taking you <laughs> as proof of why I'm just, you know, what's well, happening to me. And your wardrobe. My body is just <laughs> is transforming. In a, yeah. Oh my God. But you're having fun doing it. It's the, I, I mean, I said it the other day. This is the best, <laughs> nicest 25 pounds I've ever gained in my, well, the, the in funnest my life. It's what you said is the funnest. It's the funnest, yeah. But it, here's the problem with today because, you know, Chef brought in his, his sandwich that we're going to talk about in a bit. Uh-huh. Uh, we had to plead with John <laughs> to actually, because we went into a food coma. We actually are on an espresso right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to crawl up under the table and go to sleep. Like, I can, I'll sleep for. 15 hours right now. Right there to your right. There's a little pillow right next to Smokey. Yeah, you can have a story. seat. Yeah, I mean, it, I'll, I can sleep 15 hours. I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to have another three inches on the waist. You see how that works? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, people, look, don't do what I do. Don't do it. Run the other way. Well, what's great about what we're talking about here is we're going to talk about techniques today. Mm-hmm. But in the future, we're actually going to have part of our uh, website's going to have like the school of the walk and talk. Yeah. So you can actually get the, the intimate details of how chefs really put out some really good food. Because here's the and then when Thomas Parker comes on, he'll tell you, too. So you, you don't have to. It's not brain surgery we're doing. It's just that we've learned over a period of time of how to execute food the right way. Right. So, and when we get into the different techniques, I am going to share the techniques of the chew <laughs> and the swallow and of the, the uh, portion of bite and going to your Amazon and ordering the next size up on pants. <laughs> I'm going to get into that. All right. What was the BTS today that somebody called you? Oh, on? so Amy says, Amy Yee, uh, shoots the thing on the social media and she's like, uh, uh, what's BTS? Is that uh, big uh, big tummy status? And I'm like, oh my god, it's brilliant! <laughs> yeah, I got big tummy status in the house. That's exactly what's going on here. Oh my goodness, hit the nail on the head. Yes, and she's supposed to bring bread someday, dude. Look, I know you're hearing this uh, at this stage, Amy. You're, you're listening, right? But um, bring me the bread. Okay. Well, what do you want? She's got sourdough. She's sourdough. got English muffins. No, 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 she's got sour- oh, challah. I, she's I don't, got. I, don't want the, I, I want the. I want the. I want like bulls. Look, stop, <laughs> stop it. Sourdough or English muffins? Perfect. Yes. Oh, they're sourdough English muffins. But oh my god, stop it! Yeah. I don't know what to do. I want to throw myself <laughs> off a building. <laughs> Just like oh my god. Ah. All right. Um, by the way, stretch pants is order those. I think they don't, have don't, don't they have those yeah. like the ones that look like jeans? <laughs> yeah, like now they get, do. Yeah, yeah, you need those. That's, I've, I'm graduating to something different in my life here. Okay, uh, enough about uh, enough about me. Um, Tamis Packer. 
What's going on? What is up, my brother? How are you doing? Oh, good, man. Good. Man, you got like, so we got a lot of cool stuff, cool things happening here uh, on the show, but you, you have cool things happening right now as well. Why don't you talk about it? God, I do. My life has changed so much over the last two months. You know, I, I was at the Carroll Hotel doing my thing there. And then all of a sudden, uh, main sale lodging and development, who is who I work for. Um, they brought this amazing opportunity to meet. Um, I get to go up to Fayetteville, Georgia. I'm, you know, the, this hotel's not even opening until January 18th of 2024. So we're five months out still. Mm -hmm. And I get to be a part of the design and build of the entire food and beverage culinary operation in this hotel. Um, never, I've done openings before, but never have I had this much time and to, to really put a craft on creating, you know, the, and more so than that, the theme of this hotel is every chef's dream. It's the art of storytelling. Mm. Yeah. All right. So it, the 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 actual build of this of the property is very unique right and and i feel like let's spend a minute okay to tell up talk about like a bit of this what what this is going to be cuz i think the i think the people who are listening to this uh, are going to start booking in advance yeah it, it is in the town of trillith which is in fayetteville georgia so trillith is not actually a town it is a little township that has been created there. Um, if you've ever heard of Trillith before, it's probably because of Trillith Studios, which is now the largest movie production studio in the country. Not Hollywood, not LA. It's in Fayetteville, Georgia. It's where, you know, the Avengers movies have been filmed, mostly all the Marvel movies as of late. What about Walking The Walking Dead? Is the, that out there too? The Walking Dead was yeah. filmed there. I mean, there's so much going on. I can go, I can go for the next 20 minutes of things that I've been told. Um, but super cool. Um, I was there two weeks ago and they, they took us on the whole golf cart tour of the studios it lasted an hour. That's how big this facility is. You get to go inside of one of the, one of the studios and you see that it's five stories tall. Like it's just a big empty room. And that's where these sets are built and everything you see. And I just watched the new uh, Guardians well, of the Galaxy movie. And when we come up there and we start doing filming with you, okay, for Restaurant Recipes on the new property, I want to go off where I want to go where, where Carl loses his eye. Okay. That's right. If, if somebody can just bring me there. All right. I'm surprised you haven't done that in the kitchen yet. Uh, I mean, it wasn't reported. It wasn't reported. I mean, <laughs> You know, yeah, there was, there was an incident. No, I'm kidding. It never happened. Um, but, but, t but the books and the, you know, the hotel and. Yeah. You know. Like I said, the theme of the hotel is the art of storytelling. So the entire design of the hotel is on old school literature and movie, anything that tells a story, which can be anything. Um, which is why like I'm curating my menus around every dish having a story behind it of some sort, whether it's this famous meal from literature or in this movie, there was a huge scene as they were eating this meal or something. My mother taught me how to cook. I have, I have something for you. How about one of the dishes? Like when somebody wants like a, a guiltless sort of a dish, you know, something, you know, low fat, whatever, call it the Lilliputian salad. Lilliput? Lilliput? No? No? All right. Yeah, that's, no. Uh, okay. Yeah, leave, I mean, it's that, lost. Leave that up for us. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, entertainment here is lost on you guys. Um, all right. So speaking of storytelling, let's get you to talk, uh, tell a story about that amazing sandwich.
Attention chefs and food buyers. Are you looking to improve your proteins program with quality and service by the best in the beef business? Reach out to Peninsula Food Service. With 25 butchers on staff, their services will dazzle you and impress your dining guests. Peninsula is the largest Creekstone farm distributor in the Southeast United States. Let the gang at Peninsula Food Service cut your beef burdens away and ask about their dry-aged program. Look them up at PeninsulaFood.com. Uh, the uh, the BLFGT is what we called it, huh? So bacon, lettuce, fried green tomato. Um, another thing that I really want to focus on is that that local cuisine and in South Georgia, even here in Florida, you know, you have you have the southern cuisine that that always hits home around here. Um, so the movie Fried Green Tomatoes was filmed in Julieta, Georgia. Of course, it was, and uh, they they turned a, a corner store into what they called the Whistle Stop Cafe, and. Their big, their big seller was fried green tomatoes. And actually, after the movie was done filming, the owner of the corner store turned his store into the, the Whistle Stop Cafe. And they continue to sell fried green tomatoes to this day. You actually made fried green tomatoes, like, sexy today. Like, that sandwich was pretty, pretty amazing. Right now, it seems that whenever you hear me talk about the food and oh, it's, it's so great, it's amazing. It is, it is, and and it seems like every time there's another dish, whether it's Jeff or Jeff, I don't know what to do with myself. Well, that's that's, that's why can- your belly got big. Oh my god! But the 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 so the, there was an aioli on there. There was the the candied bacon. Like, dude, are you crazy? Yeah, you- it- Jeffrey get the said, hell out of here. Okay? Jeffrey said that's it how, best. That's how awesome it is. Just get out. I'm kidding. So tell me. Je- Jeffrey said it best. Like we've been doing this for so many years now. We, we take your, your simple sandwich, like a BLT, which is what normally toasted bread, bacon, lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, mayonnaise, right? So we figure out over the course of time, what works, what flavor profiles go together. How do you, how do you turn something simple into something phenomenal? Elevated. Elevated, yes. Well, and, and it, here's the other thing, too. I mean, when Chef was doing it, he wasn't using commodity break, bacon, which is like um, probably 12 to 17 slices for a pound, where his was probably like eight mm-hmm. slices a pound. So it was oh, the man, thickest. It was thick. So it wasn't a lard on, but it was definitely thick cut bacon. So that actually really elevates the sandwich in itself. And then the candy that he put on there with the different spices and herbs to add on it. I mean, between the between the spice profile and then hitting like a, a nice piece of fried, f- like the fat of the bacon. Oh my god! I mean, it's like melt in your mouth. Well, that crispy melt in your mouth. It's the weird. It's chipotle crazy. aioli was fire. Totally it, it works so well with the, the bacon because it, the smokiness. It's dope. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, it's a craveable sandwich. It's totally a craveable sandwich. Yes, and you know, the walk and talk podcast is a craveable podcast. And I've been actually putting that out on the social media in tags. You know, um, this is a craveable podcast. And it, it is in line with everything that we're eating on this show. And your sandwich was no nothing short of that. So that's freaking amazing. Um, all right. It's a lot easier to play with green tomatoes because that's what you usually get anyways when you order fresh. <laughs> <laughs> and... and Unless true, you're true using, story. True story. Uh, <clears throat> now I'll, watch, you're going to order green tomatoes and they're going to come in red. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know you know the worst one, the worst tomatoes for me? I was in produce for 20-something years. Uh, I can't stand the pinkies. The pink tomatoes, like for gas gas tomatoes. Ugh, I don't know how anybody orders those things. I mean, I, I get food cost, but dude, like, ugh, it's it's such a, it's such a, an anchor to the quality of whatever dish you're trying to put out when you have a pinky on there. Well, think about the pinky. What do they do with it normally? The, it goes in the cooler. Yeah. So how is it supposed to well, ripen? It, w- it wouldn't ripen anyway. Right. It's never going to. It's gassed. It's gassed. It's never going to be. You know. It's never going to get to be this beautiful red tomato. Well, it's like what we're talking in the green room. It's called farm to fable. Not not to quote you know misquote 
Keith, but you know, that's, it's exactly it. It's farm to fable. So that's actually a brilliant, um, you know, sub name, uh, you know, to what goes on out in the trade, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, where you get people who are like, yeah, everything's, you know, fresh local from wherever, you know, I get it right around the corner. Yada, yada. I had a guy, I had a chef call me. This was years ago. This was in South Florida. He calls me up frantic. It was in the dead, like dog days of summer. He calls me up. He's like, Carl, Carl, uh, I need your help. I'm like, so what's the matter? You sound like you're like, you know, the cops are outside the front door or something. He he says, I remember uh, the story. He says, uh, the news is here. Okay. He goes, they're, they're calling me out on my menu because I have everything on there is local, you know, and, and I don't have, and, and I don't have anything in the, in the cooler. I, I need something that's local. What do you got? I'm like, dude, it's like, June, August, whatever it was. I'm like, there's nothing. There's, there's no local anything here. You, you know what I mean? Like there's sweat, sweat. <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah, so he got, um, again, I'm not naming names or whatever. He's a good guy. It's just, you know, long story short is chefs don't box yourself in on your menus. If you're go- if you're going to play that game, at least put like when available, you know what I mean? So you have an out or better yet, Get with farmers that are doing hydroponic or indoor or something that you could do that you're going to use things that are seasonal. Sure. Well, that's the, you know, I, I think we should get back to actual That's seasons. exactly my point. Yeah. Seasons. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm look, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I want to have uh, watermelon and, you know, wintertime too, but really I don't, you know what I mean? It doesn't taste the same anyway. All the stuff that gets shipped in from elsewhere by the time it gets here, it, it's, I don't, I'm not, I'm not for it. I think there should be seasons and it gives it gives everybody some something to look forward to in terms of like something fun in life to look forward to. Oh, it's seasonal. Oh, it's going to be ready in a few months, man. I haven't had that since last year. I can't wait to have whatever that item is. You know, what's crazy about that. You know, I've only been here in Florida for three years now. You're lucky coming from the Midwest. Every single good restaurant in the North you have four seasonal menus a year. And, and, you know, if you have your restaurant, you're waiting for that menu to come out. I've noticed that down here, like, that just doesn't happen. Doesn't at exist. All. Well, what happens is the owner of the restaurant, and they have, when they open up and the guests come in, and if they change the menu, where's that dish? You have to have that on the dish. No. It's, you know, why can't we say, listen, that dish is like, for instance, grouper. Why would you have your uh, grouper on your menu during April, March? Or March, April, May, it's the season's closed. It goes up to twenty dollars a pound. It, it, there's other fish out there. We more can get. than that now. Yeah, well, is it really? Yeah, Re- refresh grouper out of season. Refresh, refresh. Yeah, not you know what fresh. that is. That's frozen and thawed. Yeah, sounds yeah. really good. Delicious. Refreshed grouper out of season, twenty five dollars a pound. Oof. You know, my mother in law, she would be like, "Yeah, yeah, like that." I mean, that that's the problem, though. I mean, if we develop menus and think, you know, broad based instead of just, you know, micromanaging and saying this is what it's going to be and that's it, that's the problem. And when you see things and like it says red shrimp on the menu, um, red shrimp is actually from the Pacific and usually off of the coast of Argentina and Chile. It's not, you know, local. Local here in South Florida is browns, the Gulf shrimp, or the pinks, which are going to be down in Key West. And you're going to pay a lot of, a lot of money for it. That's but the problem. But well, listen. There's a price. Uh, there's a price for that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't know. Like that's a whole other story. But, um. But yeah, I, I feel like um, I feel like that's a topic that's not brought up enough out there. Speaking of which, when you're when you open the hotel, you're going to have four different times a year that you're going to change your menu, or what are you going to do there? How are you going to work that out? Uh, I don't know yet. I've been playing around with uh, with Grant Ackett's idea at Next. Uh, having menus themed around a specific cuisine at a specific time um, and doing menus based off that versus just, and I mean, obviously they'll be based around seasonality and what's available at the time, but I haven't really figured that out yet. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, your beef is beef, you know, your, your meats for the most part, uh, 
are pretty pretty solid. Well, right. they'll swing, like, for instance, you know, like veal or, or filet mignon or your ribeye will <laughs> December, that will start to climb up because you have New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's but, that's just a supply and demand thing, but mm-hmm. it's available. It, it, there, you know, like, it's, there's always something out there being raised that's not like, uh, you know, cows are seasonal, you know what I mean, for the most part. Oh, yeah. And and so what are we really talking about? We're talking about fruits and veg. We're talking about, you okay, Grandpa? We're talking about uh, fruits and veg, right? And we're talking about seafood. Seafood, yeah. So, you know, I'm just looking at it from just a guy who eats a lot, right? You should be able to put together menus that are pretty robust with stuff that's around, you know? Um, I don't know. When you're d- designing your menu for this upcoming um, hotel, you re- are you also contemplating, like, not only the theme of the restaurant, but, like, the, the storytelling but interaction with the guest as well? Yeah, so the the flagship restaurant is going to be called Prologue, and if you know what a prologue is, it's the, the introduction to the introduction of a piece of literature. Um, so the, the, the idea behind it is, you know, every dish on the menu has a story, and your server there, then for becomes your prologue. Um, as the guest chooses, they, they explain the story behind it, you know, without getting too hokey and making it i mean are they going to dress the part no they're not dressing okay. up God. just kidding come on i mean <laughs> it could, it could we're, we're like, here to entertain you know what i mean come it could on. be like the uh fred savage movie where, where he's uh sick in bed and uh what is that called the princess bride <laughs> andre the giant andre the giant <laughs> <laughs> guy comes out dressed like him <laughs> it's inconceivable <laughs> it's, see that's why you're that's why we have you around Jeff. Yeah. you come up with this good stuff I just love the concept of that whole idea because I mean, think that's one of the things when you look at now that we're three years out of COVID, you look now and go, where's our industry going? Like we talked earlier in the green room about um, tapas bars and you know, small plates are going to be where I think that's where we're going to go. So people are shareable. But the other aspect of it is think about like when you go out to eat now, you're just, they slop down the food and that's it. There's no entertainment value. When before we had entertainment, that's why you went out to eat. Hard yeah, but everybody, life. everybody's, the, the workforce disappeared. You know, I mean, it's taken it's still, this, it's still, it's, yeah, it's yeah. still very uh, sparse to, to begin with mm-hmm. now. So it's hard to find people who, you know, are going to dress up uh, like the Lilliputians from Gulliver's Travels. I, that was a good thing. I can't believe they glazed over it. Lilliputians are Lillip- from Gulliver's, Gulliver's Travels. Travels. Yeah, man. Oh, I was thinking the Oompa Loompas. No, man. <laughs> I was in the wrong one. I was a, I was a, Lilliput. Go yeah, over. I got it. Tra- God. Man, I, got I had, I had the other one. I had, uh, you know, Oompa, Doompa, Dindy, Dindy. Yeah, dump. yeah, whatever. Dirty. Um, so we got some pretty interesting news. I don't know if I told you yet. No? I don't know. Thomas? Uh, when he here. does that, I have no idea where he's going with it. So uh, it doesn't, gonna, it's like Russian roulette. Think about this. The world. Food ah. championship. Dallas, Texas this year. November. Yours truly going to be a master judge. It's going to be, I don't know, 300 chef teams of uh, three people. And it's going to be a madhouse. I'm so excited. That's cool. So it's so cool. And See, all that eating paid off. Yeah, all yeah. Eating. Master judge. <laughs> <laughs> master waistline. So... But we're, here's the cool part. He's got four weeks to like train. <laughs> <laughs> today was today was like a Rocky Rocky Balboa day for me. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Insta- oh my god, we should do that behind the scenes <laughs> insta- <laughs> in, instead of hitting the <laughs> just force feeding him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, instead of like instead the, of hitting the, the bags. <laughs> wait, wait. Instead of, hitting, instead of hitting the meat in the in the cooler, I'm just grabbing chunks of meat and just. Yeah, yeah. We, we can handle that. I could do it. <laughs> oh. Carl <laughs> is the chef's foie. <laughs> oh, wow. We're just stuffing just, his lips. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but here's the cool part. Um, we're actually going to we're gonna be doing the show. Walk and Talk podcast out there. So Four days. Yeah. Yeah, how cool is that? That is so, so cool. Uh, so there's a company called IMG, okay? And they own little things called like the UFC and the WWE, you know, little things like that. Yeah. Right? They just recently, over the summer, they purchased the World Food Championship. 
So now it's going to turn into, I mean, it was always pretty cool, but it's now going to get funneled a lot of cash. They're going to throw a lot of cash into it and promote the hell out of it. So I'm super excited for us to go and be part of this thing. So it's going to be dope. We should have like special, uh, cause, cause of Mark, we should have like special jackets made of purple <laughs> right. or hot pink or something yeah. like that. So we stand so out. My, my buddy, uh, Mark Conway, he, uh, he's like the Ryan Seacrest of, uh, of this, uh, you know, WFC, right? Yeah. Oh, he likes to stand out. Yeah. And his and suits are phenomenal. Like we met him, uh, we met him at the NAFM show last year and super cool cat. He was in this blazing hot pink fuchsia, fuchsia ish <laughs> looking suit. And I'm like, I'm just like, I couldn't, I can't pull that off. I can't pull that off. I just, I don't have, I have character and energy, but not that. I can't do that. No, this dude, I was running around trying to get guests to come in and he goes, well, you met Mark. I'm like, no, I was, I had like three bumps of espresso and I was running around. He goes, yeah. I go, but I know his suit. It was pink. That's how I know. I didn't know his name. I know he would say Mark. I'm like, Mark, he goes, pink suit. Oh, that guy. Okay. Yeah. That's how I knew him. hundred percent. Crazy. Anyway. So, um, yeah, he called up. He's like, Hey man, what do you think about, uh, being a judge? And, and I was like, yeah, hell yeah. So super, super excited about that. Um, also excited. Someday we'll get into more information on it is, is our walk and talk, uh, you know, food extravaganza, uh, October 23rd, October 23rd at Sally Mar rooftop bar in Midtown Tampa. That's going to be badass too. Yeah. Cause it's good. It's basically, uh, like 50 or so people. It's going to be all chefs and, you know, foodie food bloggers. Yeah. So it's just cocktails and food. It's going to be badass. Uh, Jeffrey over here is going to uh, stuff everybody's face yeah. with food. You should just do, he's still just, in training. So I got to make sure he eats. You too. know, I would, I would, <laughs> it's, it's part you know, of you're going to be a couple <laughs> weeks out at that point. I you know. I really, you just got to really just shove it yeah. in there. I got to, you're going to drag me across the finish line. Literally, literally. We got a wheelbarrow. Yeah. We got a wheelbarrow. Oh my God. It's I'm Dallas. Have to, I, I gotta go, I gotta get stretchy pants. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, what were those things called? We used to wear Zumbas. No, what was a uh, Spanx? Spank? No, we didn't wear Spanx. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I want to see you in Spanx. No, you don't. No, and that's, actually, you're right. It's I really, don't. no, you're fired. <laughs> you out. don't pay me. It's okay. Oh, get out. <laughs> wow. Leave the bacon. All right. uh, that's his bacon. Today. I know, but, it, but you're the bacon guy. Oh, oh, I gotta like explain no, everything I got today. It. I got it. Speaking of Lilliputian, my God. <laughs> All right, but um, but yeah, no, uh, we have a lot to do. Like we need so um, Victor, wait, 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 new wait. chef. Yeah, well, we're looking for some sponsors for this. Mm -hmm. You know, because what we will do is uh, I will be wearing you know probably a jacket or whatever. Um, you'll have a chef coat, obviously, and I have uh, too. yeah. But I want to get them all like NASCAR logoed up. You know what I mean? Um, so if you're if you're listening to this and you want to be a sponsor for this event it's going to be televised it's giant there's going to be probably ten thousand people there over the course of four days if not more if not more um it's like mass hysteria dogs and cats sleeping together yeah yeah i mean absolutely the whatever what, what else falls from the sky what was it from the uh, meatballs meatballs i don't know whatever uh if you look yeah we are looking for sponsorship so um you know contact uh give us a ring a ding you know what i'm saying out there Okay. We have, we have somebody that I actually sent to is Angela. I did reach out to her. So I'm talking to her. So hopefully we'll get some good news from that. Yeah. You know who wants to get involved? Oh, you know who's going to get involved with this is uh, Foodie Patootie. Yeah. Good old Pooch. Mm hmm. Yeah. Pooch Sean, Pooch. Yeah. Sean Rivera. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's <clears> a <throat> super good guy. And very soon he'll probably, he'll probably be the chef personality that we kick off this, uh, you know, um, chef on the street, um, you know, situation we're segment, together, segment. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's looking to come, he's going to be here, uh, anytime. He wanted to come like yesterday. I know. <laughs> he's like, it's so cheap. So I'll just fly and fly back. Yeah. He's from new Orleans. And, uh, so he's going to be the, uh, you know, eyes and ears of, uh, of new Orleans and, you know, trending, what's hot, not, and, you know, he's got some things that he wants to, you know, kind of build a platform on, which I'm not going to reveal today. I'm going to, I don't want to put it out there, but, um, yeah, it's going to be badass. 
you know, and he's super high energy. Like he's a lot of good character. Like I, I'm, 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 there's so many things to be excited about right now. And that's just one of them. Just one of them. You're the other one, Tom. We got Jason Pooker. We have uh, Manny Hader over in California. LJ Clink over in the South or Northwest. I think uh, we had one other person that we we're talking to in the Northeast. We were talking about, I can't remember who it was. I now. can't now. There's so many. There was about, like a dozen chefs. Yeah. It's going to be cool. Yeah. We're taking over. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be badass, man. It's going to be cool. Um, now, when you get your legs under you, man, we're coming to the hotel. We're going to be probably four or five deep, right? And we're going to do all your restaurant recipe segments. I'm sure you're going to have some amazing cocktail program for the Dirty Dash. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have. Are you part of that or is that they leave it? To, are you part of the cocktail pro- program or no? Um, we haven't hired an F&B director yet, but our corporate uh, beverage guy, Vicente, he's freaking phenomenal. Like a wizard with cocktails. Um, he's, he's behind getting all the wines and cocktail menus together and that for us. And like the Harry Potter of, yeah. Of, yeah. Of like cocktails. wizard. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to keep it, you know, into the whole movie yeah, genre, yeah, yeah. storytelling genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, he's, he's curating the cocktails just like I am to tell the stories, to tell the to pair with the food and, and help build those stories. Um, it's going to be dope. Dope. Yeah. I love it. Um, so <sighs> we're still trying to get a house. Yep. Yeah. I think the last house that uh, Brian sent us was the one in uh, Plant City. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to have a brick and mortar and it's going to be something special. Um, podcast studio, photography studio, um, you know, banging kitchen cameras everywhere. And, uh, I mean, we're tying it into the butcher shop. We're tying it into the fact that we've been in the top 10 on Apple podcast charts and the food category for months and months, um, which is awesome. Thank you, people. Appreciate everybody. Sincerely, like, thank you. Uh, Vicki Webster and her last urban farmer, the, her um, review was just stellar. Yes. So thank you, Vicki. Yeah. Thanks for the five stars. Yeah. Yes. And, and thank you for letting me play with the, the pigs. That's weird. It's so weird. <laughs> well, when you bring, when your farmer's in a distress and you need to help them out, butcher or break down their pigs. I, your choice of words is what's weird. Not the situation. <laughs> okay. It's your, your, it's me. Yeah. It's you. You're weird. <laughs> thank you know you. what I mean? I resemble that. But I like your shirt. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, pirate's life. Oh, it's, oh it's, really? It's chefs. We're all, right. we're all weird. Yeah. We're wired wrong. I used to, when I, or right. When I first started, I would, uh, you know, one of my jobs on my apprenticeship was I had to steam the lobsters every day. I used to dump the lobsters out on the on the seafood counter and just play with them. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Who doesn't? You didn't name them or nothing. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We, you would have to, dude, we, seriously, I know this. Have little like, races. My, my old sous chef, <laughs> my old sous chef, Alex, uh, Alex Sutherland, over when I was with Umi with Carmine in West Palm or PGA, uh, we would take the lobsters, take the rubber bands off, and then give them spatulas. <laughs> we would have like sword <laughs> fights. <laughs> Hashtag, Pete is listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. We, we weren't doing anything to harm them. <laughs> they were just, you know, <laughs> they were, they have sword fights. Wow. This is <laughs> like, like gladiator, you know, lobsterator or lot. Yeah. Lobster, I, don't I know. mean, come on, Carl. If you knew you were about to die, when you want to have a little fun beforehand? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. I mean, they don't scream that often. I mean, that long. Oh my God. <laughs> Speaking of which, we could talk about the behind the scenes of what we do to how to make things go. I mean, like, how do you stuff a lobster? Do you, do it first or do you kill it first or then you boil it and then take it out? What do you do? Kill it first. Go through the process. Yeah. Kill it. Go through the whole process. Kill it. And then yeah, you boil it, then stuff it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's different things like looking for speaking of lobster because we're on that subject to keep a lobster straight. Mm -hmm. How do you keep a lobster tail straight? Uh, Skewer. Right up the, 
right, right up the, stays, yeah, yeah, it stays uh -huh. straight. So you don't have that curve. Those are little things that with nuances that we learn over a period of time. And when people say, well, how do you produce food that quick? We don't produce food that quick. We just, you know, timing 18 minutes for this or four minutes for that. And six minutes for that. So over a period of time, you just start learning and learning and developing. I think the, what's the hardest thing you make that you can think of that takes a little longest. God, I don't even know. I, it, no, that, hold that, on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me reel this in. Because I'm reading John. I know I'm reading John's mind. Like John's like, oh, you guys are like, totally off topic. Like, how the hell did you get into? How did you get into skewers and lobsters, uh, mongolios? Like, how did that happen? Let me, let me, let me. Hold on. Stop. Stop. Ready? Stop. You made what do we call it? The uh, pistachio dust or what? Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you put? How did you pick your ingredients to make that? And how did you put it together? It's easy, right? Or not? Well, there it's because that was on the rub today for the lamb. Correct. It's it's a little more complicated than just throwing stuff together because you have to know the nuances of what's gonna enhance the flavor profile. There's some really good books out there. If somebody wants to get into it, it's like flavor profile or the flavor bible, or there's the science behind of how we taste. But then there's also this thing like, for instance, when you make a steak, how do you know what's gonna go with it? You know that a ribeye is gonna taste like X. And then if you put garlic, salt, and pepper, you know those flavor profiles. If you're like me, I am like, okay, I have this this steak, this piece of meat, right? And then I'm like, oh, what else do I have in this house that I can make as a side? And it's always afterthought for me, right? Mm -hmm. And let, it, it, like if my wife or the, like, they, they, they structure things. I am such a shoot from the hip individual uh, where. We know. Yeah. I know. John and I both know. But Hey, but it works. It gels. Things come it together. Does. You know what I mean? So. That's why you have people like who are structured like John and myself. Yeah. I'm smart. <laughs> I'm smart. I'm smart. I'm not like they say. Godfather reference. Yes, people. I got okay. it. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, the reality is I have to put people around me who do things that I don't do. And, and we're being it's successful. You know what I mean? It's it's we're doing things and it's working. People, you know, our audience somehow <laughs> finds us entertaining or, or how, whatever the hell it is. I don't even, I can't do I don't even know. Like seriously. Well, yeah. I mean, because I think we just about do it. what we do. Because think about it. Think about it. Think about it. They can't like you and they probably don't like me. How, wh why are they listening? I don't even know. It's the topics. It's the, it's topics. the chemistry. Yeah. It's John. It's probably John. <laughs> John does it all. He, he holds it all together. He does. He's like the, uh, the safety pin here. Holding up the diaper. <sighs> He's the will be. He's the security blanket. He's the Whoopi and the Gold. No, the no, Goldberg? no, the Goldberg. No. Whoopi, oh. Whoopi. Whoopi. Anyhow, so getting back to the rubs and stuff and where it comes from. So I've been asked. I know there's a thing on on Facebook that's been popping up. Don't stop asking chefs what their favorite meal is or what they want to cook or whatever. Somebody asked me. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Somebody because I saw something like that, and it, and it basically had to do with stop asking right, chefs. Right. That's what I mean. Don't stop. stop. Hey, no, stop asking chefs. I think the, I gave a big middle finger to that. The proper question would be is how do you come up with your like your menu ideas? Like how did you come up with the bacon idea today? With the candied bacon? Oh, just it, experimenting. First of all, you you play around with so many different ways. Like you said, you really get an understanding of, you know, you said fenugreek earlier, you know, to know that it's super perfumey when it's in that raw state of form, but then when you cook it it adds this beautiful like smokiness to it, oh, it yeah, a little pretty, bit almost like maple molasses like maple, to it yeah so just just learning learning your flavor profiles and what's going to pair well together yeah i think when i was asked that question like how do you come up with stuff i look i can because i'm a huge sci-fi geek so I, I think of the matrix and i see the ribeye in my face like dripping down and then i see what goes with it like i said before salt pepper whatever and then you're like okay potatoes and then you got the camera guy over here going well, it can't be flat. It can't be this. Okay. Well then let me do peels. And then the peels crunchy. And then I got this texture. And like today it was like, okay, I had green, the Brown, the black from the black garlic reduction. And then I came up with the idea of how do I get crunch? So I started thinking, okay, where am I going to have something with crunch, but it's not going to be thrown in there for like, like a rosemary sprig, like we did back in the nineties and eighties. Um, so I thought of and researched, shut up. I know you're not even that old. <laughs> And then uh, these, these young guys, um, I researched because I had that flavor profile book, bro 
what would go well with lamb as far as a fruit was going. Cause I had I wanted to experiment with the pears. That's where I came up with it. And then I thought, Ooh, Harissa. So it was like the James Woods, you know, like, Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, this. And then, Ooh, thyme. Ooh, salt. And that's how it developed. And again, an experiment. Like I didn't even try that until it was done. And my wife always asked me like, well, don't you taste your food? How can you taste oh a steak? I, mine's the, <laughs> the, the exact same. What, what do you mean? The first time you're making it is, you know, the day you put it on the menu. Well, because it is, you know. I, I mean, I, what I what I end up doing is I rub my belly like a genie lamp. And then <laughs> and it pops out. And it comes, yeah, and, it, and all of a sudden it's like, make this. You know, like, okay, there, yeah. there you go. And a lot of times, you know, like, I can't yell at my daughter when she sits there in the refrigerator and she holds the door open and she's looking. I can't go, what are you doing? Because I do the same thing. How can you not? Like, so, you know, that's funny because uh, I do spend a lot of time staring into the pantry <laughs> and into the refrigerator. And I'm not bothering anyone, Mm-mm. right? I'm just there. I pay the electric bill anyway. Like, I want the door open and I want to see what's in there. I want to see what's going to like pop out at me. I'm not moving anything and looking around. These women of ours or men or whatever you got. They need to leave us the hell alone. <laughs> I want to stare. In, I want to stare into the refrigerator. I want to. I want a thousand yard stare into the pantry. Something is going to cap, 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 you know, catch my fancy, mm-hmm. and I'm going to eat it, and I'm going to enjoy it alone. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> well, and that's the thing too. I mean, we we think the same way. We don't. Chefs don't do anything that's different from a mom or somebody who's cooking at home. They're cooking with love. Just like Anthony Bourdain said, when you go to somebody's house and you're eating their food, you're cooking their soul, their love. And that's the passion they have. That's how we feel about John's uh, Cafe Con Leches. <laughs> Seriously. And that's how he feels about it, too. Yeah. I just realized I've had too much coffee today because I've got that woohoo on my yeah, I feel like you've, you've actually made that noise about six <laughs> times in the last two and a half minutes. So well, that you had no idea I was doing it because, right. again, the beaker goes. Yeah. From right. the Muppets. Right. right. No, that's, no, that's the, the Swedish chef. Yeah, yeah that's right, the right, Swedish right. chef. Right. Charles Ransmore, who is over. <laughs> yeah, I get to work with that guy now uh, every week. That's you, Jeff. Aren't, aren't he, isn't he happy? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, look, dude, are we ever going to get this? Like, I still, do we know who the DJ is going to be? Do we have a menu for this October 23rd? Yeah, the menu thing? we have, we have Jonathan and I have already spoken and we've worked out the details for the drinks because I've that was secretly, the biggest one. I'm like Pete Rose and I've, I bet I've made a bet on this. We don't have <laughs> to know, do this. I, I wanted to no, know. We put it out if there. If you have gotta, so much doubt about it, then we don't have I, to I do have, it. You I can have, have all the reins on it. I have such like a doubt. Like I throw it back on him? Uh, I'm a doubting Thomas. I'm a doubting Thomas. I, Why I, is it doubting Thomas? It's no, doubting, no, me, doubting. I'm the, not Thomas. Is the, it's I am. It should be David. Doubt, doubting okay. Davis. Okay, so no, it's it's doubt. It's a doubting Thomas. That's the the saying, and there's a reason for that. But the, my, John, there's a saying. Yeah, don't be a doubting Thomas. <sighs> Did you know? John I didn't know that. Ben. No. He Forget just he just move on. All right. Um, <laughs> Google it, okay? Anyway. I can't. Uh, we're during the show. Later. Google it later. What are we talking about here? This is this is probably what people like, this this back and forth banter. Well, let, the comment. Um, what? Let them comment. Nobody comments except you know for... What they, for they did like the big uh, tummy thing. <laughs> the one you can grow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like it. Um, all right. Uh, no, but seriously, like, I want to know what a menu is. I, I, we need, oh, we, so me and John and I had a conversation the other day and it was about putting out the, uh, the actual limitation for this thing. Um, so yeah, we're going to put some stuff out. If you're listening and you get one, great. And if you're listening and you don't get one, it's not that we don't love you. It's just, it's a 50 person thing and you know, no hard feelings. We got, what, we got 20 openings for like the regular public. We're going to have not really. Why? Because you got we got to bring you know uh, representatives from Peninsula, Malina. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of these. You know, like who's coming s- from Pen- Peninsula? Milan, Milan, probably Veronica. I don't know, but uh, who are you po- going to represent then? Hmm? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> He's just going to eat. Yeah, I'm going re- to. Re- Thank you. That's what I was waiting for. I'm, Thank I'm, you, Thomas. I'm, I'm going to represent my waistline. Yeah. <laughs> we should have a. We should. Have- Spandex. <laughs> we should have a GoFundMe for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's to, so you can clothe me. I need a, a I need a GoFundMe for a new wardrobe. 
Oh my goodness. My poor children. They look at me and they're like, Daddy, no, stop eating. No, they don't. They don't. And you're happy when you eat, so they can't be. I really look forward to Thursdays, man. <laughs> I really look forward to Thursdays. Um, the other day, he, he calls me up. He goes, what are you doing? I'm like, I just got done working out. He's, meet me over here. So, uh, do we get a talk? Yeah, we got to talk. What did you have for breakfast that day? <laughs> <laughs> so they have these. So this place has this. They're, it's freaking delicious. It's a, it's a beautiful cinnamon roll. That's just drenched with the oh, dude! It's it's tell me that's not amazing. It was it was like a cinnamon pancake, like a cinnamon bun. It's not pancake. a pancake. It's a freaking, but it's a, it's a legit. It's a cinnamon roll, but it's but it's like extra. Okay, it's not like a little cinnamon roll. It's a, it's giant. And I ate the hell out of it, and then I had my egg sandwich. I had an egg and steak, uh, steak and egg sandwich too. No, you had a and Cuban. Grits. Oh, that was that day. Yeah. This, I do this, this often. <laughs> <laughs> I do this a lot. I, I don't know. Why. What's funny is the, 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 the two servers go, we're trying to figure out where we know him from. And you look familiar, too. And we're, I'm like, America's most wanted. I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't know. I come here a lot and, and eat the cinnamon rolls. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably where you know me from. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, no. I, I, uh, last, was it last week? The week before? I was there like three or four times. You know, had a Maybe that's why they know you. Yeah. Well, it uh, wasn't from the podcast. Yeah, that's why you, you look go familiar. there that much. Well, it's probably both. Because I know the anyway. So I went there with like you. I went there with Richard. I went there with a few people. You you work. Now look at me, John. You work <laughs> every time, I, dude. I, I live right near there. That's why I went there. It's I don't want to hear anything from him because he's tied to his desk. And that's it's, it. a, it's like Faltenberg and Brandon Boulevard. Yeah, it's, it's an hour for you. He doesn't mind. Look at that. Look at his face. You need to take him there now. What's the, what was the thing in the nineties with the, with the that would stand outside the the, the convenience store? A uh, silent Dave and uh, or silent uh, Bob. Bob, silent Bob, and yeah. that's him. <laughs> he's like he's like Penn and Teller, Penn and Teller, or where or, Teller or, doesn't Jay, talk, or Jay and Silent the, Bob, yeah, Jay and Silent Bob, yeah, yeah, yeah. So but which one was Silent? I guess this is, the, <laughs> the fuck, what, are, what are you doing? I dropped my phone. Okay, since you have to do that, we, he's looking trying to put on a professional program here, and you're you're seriously since when? No, I, I don't know. <laughs> it sounds good. Yeah, Jane, Silent Bob, Silent Bob is here. He's the one with the overcoat and the and the baseball hat. Remember? Yeah, backwards. He always had it backwards. Yeah, right. red, you red and white, right? I don't remember that. That's a little bit extra. I, I don't know, but there he is, right there. Gives a smile. Uh, you know, shakes his head. Yes, no, whatever. He talks once in a while. He just doesn't like to talk. I don't want to look. Who wants to listen? Who wants to hear that? Eh? I do. Do you know who this is? James Hellebuck? Yeah. Okay. He's All not right. that. He's pretty. He doesn't, he doesn't even have gray in his beard. You lie. I don't. God. He doesn't. If, if there's any. He doesn't. People, you know, say what you will, but you can always trust me to say the truth. That's the. I don't BS around. Guy doesn't have a freaking gray whisker. Why would he know Jay and Silent Bob? Well, he knew that one movie we were talking about earlier. That was an old movie. Which one was that earlier? Porky's. Yeah, Porky's. Which is so bizarre. <laughs> First of all, the Porky's franchise, uh, movie franchise, uh-huh. freaking classic. Right. Why would he know that? I don't know. There's nudes. That's I know. Why, well, yeah. maybe that's why, yeah. Yeah, he's, Hello. He's like, uh, yeah, they, uh, it's just hole, hole in the shower. They, they call me meat. The hole the <laughs> they call me meat. Yeah. Revenge uh, of the nerds. Yeah. That was a great one. Booger. That was my nickname in the fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, I can say that. Yeah. Well, you were in uh, the Lambda Lambda no, Lambda. No, I was right? a, I'm, Lambda? I'm a founding father of Pi Lambda Phi Kappa Omicron. I'm pretty sure you're a Tri Lambda. No, 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 I was not a Tri Lambda. I'm pretty sure. No, yeah, yeah, no. It was, trust me, I, I've got like Cindy Orr, Mike the, Buford, Brian, Brian Hoffman, Alan Lieberman, Danny Callahan. They can all tell you my nickname was Booger. Your nickname is Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and for people who don't know what we're talking about, Google it. Yeah. Um, watch the movie. Yeah, I mean, it's really funny. It's not going to play well now today, like in this world. You know, but it's still hilarious. That's like, a whole podcast in itself. What cannot play today that played back then? 
Jefferson's is one show I can think of. Everything. Mm-hmm. A lot. Well, right? every, every, yeah. literally, literally everything. Jefferson's. <laughs> Could I, you imagine that? No. I All in the, the family? family? I loved All in the Family and Jefferson's, man. And I loved when Archie Bunker and, uh, and, and uh, Mr. Jefferson, I loved when they got together. Mr. Drummond? Mr. Drummond. That was the next door neighbor yeah. to the Jeffersons. Mr. Drummond? Yeah. The white dude married to Lenny Kravitz's mother. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mr. Drummond is is with uh, Gary uh, Coleman. Oh, Cole, no, yeah. that wasn't Drummond. That was yeah. something else. No, the father in, in, uh, in that show is Mr. Drummond. Who was the next door neighbor on the Jeffersons then? Oh, John's going to have to look it up now. I don't know. He, there Mr. He Producer? John? But you know who I'm talking about. Uh, the, the couple that was the mixed racial couple married next to the store. Yeah, that one, the, like the tall, uh-huh. the tall English guy. I think well, it was English, right? He, he looked. English, I think his name is didn't... John something. I could be totally wrong, and I don't remember that. That's like, that's really going way deep, and you know, not for nothing. I was uh, I don't know, like five years old when that was on. <laughs> so I was older. Yeah, you were you were like eleven. <laughs> no, I'm not that much older than you. You're freaking old. You have the gray. I mean, I do well, too, but, but you are the old man at the table here. Even I feel, though, wait a minute. I feel young and viral sitting next to you. Viral? You know, viral. <laughs> or viral. Viral. I'm going to go viral for being viral. <laughs> you know? We, we do have to. We're missing the boat here. Um, I don't have my glasses on, so there's no way I can see <laughs> that. okay, Pat. Neither does he. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can, actually, I can actually read this. And let's. Ha- oh, Harry Bentley. Paul, Paul Benedict. Yeah. Was Bentley? Was the name? Harry Bentley, Paul Benedict, is the Jefferson's English next door neighbor. Bentley works as No, a- that was the one prior though. There was another one. Not Drummond, dude. Bentley, Drummond is from the I from, know, but the from Bentley uh, was the Bentley was the other one. There was, different strokes, dude. Yeah, but Bentley was the other one. That was the black hair dude. That he was not married to the woman next door. The, that guy was a tall, blondish older guy. <sighs> I, I vaguely remember. Not, but now I, I know that guy you're okay, talking about was Listen, 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 listen. I think number, he was on uh, Hogan's number, Heroes. Well, time out, time out, time out, time out. First things first, you're wrong on Drummond because that's different strokes. That's fine. And it takes different strokes for different folks. I understand that. But you're still wrong on that one. Just saying. What do you mean I'm wrong on that one? It was an English guy. I was right. That was one neighbor. There was the other neighbor that was married to... Well, I wasn't, Why are we here even talking about I don't this? Know, we're we're I wasn't a food even ta- podcast now. I wasn't talking about that neighbor. <laughs> I was talking about this, this guy here. Oh, you were talking about that guy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. then that makes sense. I didn't know that's who you are talking about. I don't know what the hell you are talking about. Can you tell me, can somebody talk about some tangy barbecue sauce or something? Oh, my God. Would I, How, about Tillman? How about Tillman getting it? Can somebody get me a sandwich? Oh, what's this? Tom and, oh, Tom. yeah, that guy. That's not, that's, okay. So Tom, uh, Tom and Helen Willis. That's what, okay. Who, yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah. We're Mr. just talking about Willis. No, not that. <laughs> not <laughs> again. Drummond. You were mentioning Drummond. different strokes. It's not different strokes. It's a different Willis. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. So I'm enjoying this. So the, anybody who's still listening at this point, like, <laughs> thank we, you. Thank you. And you're diehard. And you know what? Let us know because Jeff is going to make something special for you, the listener. Oh, I mean, really? if there's more than one, we have to choose. But if, uh, yeah, we'll make, you'll make something up and we'll, we'll, if they're uh, not local, I'll send them some stuff. We'll dry ice it and send it out, man. Right. Cause if somebody just listened through to that, 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 <laughs> they that deserve something freaking riffraff of, uh, yeah. I sh- Thomas, <laughs> I try to keep it like professional here. I try. I Look really- at that face. <laughs> Why wasn't there why, a camera on Why don't that? we have it? We have to get like, yeah, we need a, a, a static camera on. We on need a, the John on. camera. The John cam. Yeah. John cam. You have the, we have the guys, the chefs on the street, and then the John cam. The John cam. No <laughs> words, just facial expressions. <laughs> no, Some hand gestures here and there. Hand gesture, <laughs> you know. Right. Finger gestures. <laughs> You're number one. You're number one. He always compliments me with that, that I'm number one, man. I freaking I love this guy. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wait. That's not what it means. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Tom, uh, Thomas, when's the, uh, when's the hotel opening up? January 18th. What do you so do So we're going to be there on the 19th is what you're saying. What's that? We're going to be there on the 19th then is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No. All right. So. Uh, of March. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after the holidays for sure. Uh, I mean, actually, you know what? Um, maybe we can do a spring break over there. That might be something. 
What my wife is always breaking my balls about, you know, going somewhere uh, on spring break. We never go anywhere. There you go. Kids and everything. What are you going to do from the time now when you move up there until January? I mean, like, what's what's your schedule going to be like? Well, working from home right now, it's it's all it's the design life. and rough life. build of. Yeah. It's so weird. Never, never worked from home before. Like, not having a kitchen to walk into every day is weird as hell. Um, but. It's designing menus, designing banquet menus, you know, starting to do things to get our name out there. Can I offer you some advice? What? Listen, you have a, a wife, you have a, a, a very young child, infant. Uh, mm-hmm. You've got cats and dogs and stuff. Throw pans at them. <laughs> you know, this way you can feel like you're still at, uh, you know, like you're at work, man. You don't want to feel, you don't want to disengage too much. Start, th- just start screaming at them for no reason. <laughs> Random. Sc- bring her into the refrigerator, open up the refrigerator, <laughs> the freezer, right? And just start yelling at her. You know what I mean? Right there with the open freezer. Why is this not organized? Yeah, that's going to be good. Well, I'm only we, were, we were talking in the green room about how his wife organizes the house and my wife organizes the house, which is there's null and void. If there is no organization. Yeah. Well, for them, there is. It's not chef organization. Yeah. That's another great topic to talk about in the industry is how chefs get along with their wives and. What do you mean? Well, the first, second, second fourth wife? Like, right. Which, exactly. Which, which one exactly? Yeah, it, takes, it takes a few to find the right one. True story. Put up with us. Hey, let me tell you something. Salespeople uh, in the food industry have the same, um, you know, relation, relationship mm-hmm. statuses as uh, many of our kitchen uh, brethren. Yes. So just FYI, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, we're coming up on, uh, oh, I'm coming up on, hey, John, roll it, baby. We're coming up on an hour here. Um, oh, yeah. I, you know, Pablo Escobar? Vivas. Oh. No, Pablo Vivas, who was the uh, writer and creator of our intro music. Love that guy. Just wanted to do a shout out for Pablo. Um, with that said, um, we will be coming to your hotel and we're going to film, we're going to record, we're going to do some badass stuff over there with you. Are you excited? I'm super excited. I know you are. I'm going to get, did I'm, you get, you failed to mention that he's got an, an auditorium for something, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah I have right. a whole kitchen theater. I'm going to put Jeffrey up there doing a butcher class. Yeah, boy. Yep. And it's all going to be televised. I love it. All right. Um, Chef Thomas Parker, thank you for coming out today. Chef Jefferson Starship Schlissel. Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday, Happy John birthday, Hernandez John. of Ibis Images, where food photography comes alive. Hey, thanks, everybody, for listening. You all have a wonderful, wonderful day. We are out.